Hello folks, how are you all doing today? Let us know we, where you are watching from. We're gonna get started. Um, don't have a lot of um, uh, commercials to talk about, so we're probably just gonna get started with making these cards. So I'll give a second for a few people to come on. I'm on right at seven, so that's a little surprising. I'm gonna move in my little spotlight here, brighten things up a little bit on my side and hopefully your side too. <clears throat> I hope you all had a great week. All right, so we are gonna be, hey Carla. Yep, it's cold, isn't it? Yep, we're ready, East Coast people. It's, uh, it's 30 degrees right now, my computer says, but the wind chills probably makes it like about 10. Um, and tomorrow it's only gonna be like three degrees. So um, I'm not ready for the Arctic blast, but you know, there's light, uh, light at the end of the tunnel on Sunday. It's supposed to be get a little bit warmer and then we're getting a ton of, I guess uh, some snow, at least six inches on Monday, they're saying right now, but you know, things don't always pan out to what it um, usually is, especially down here where I live in the valley. You just never know what we're gonna get. So anyway, we are gonna be making these two cards tonight. These are the cards I made um, at my team gathering on Wednesday. We meet on the second Wednesday of every single month. Um, so we usually I make some cards, mystery cards or I try to have somebody from my team that's local be a guest stamper, um, but most people kind of shy away from that because they're just they're they're just nervous about it. I guess I don't know. Um, we all have to start somewhere, so I try to encourage every single month to have somebody come out of their comfort zone, kind of like me. Like, ooh, I'm here again. <laughs> Um, all right, so we got Louise, Carla, Pam, everybody, my regulars are coming on, so that's awesome to see. Um, so Monday on my Facebook page, we made these awesome otter cards. Um, I just made two of them, and I promise not to get the envelopes mixed up with the card. So here's the one with the stripes, really fun. I have that little... Um, hat fussy cut out and popped up with a mini dimensional. It's a birthday card. And then here's this one with the misty moonlight um, background here with the rainbow paper, very popular paper. And I've got that um, satin, not satin, but uh, what's it called? Pool party sheer ribbon. So um, I asked if you guys wanted to um, get into the drawing um, just to send me an email saying you wanted to. So if you stuck around to the end of that video, you would have um, known that or watched the replay in, in its entirety. So I just had one person email me and I'm not sure if she's on, but if I see her pop on, she's in the West Coast, so three hour time change. But Jean Ann, you won one of these cards. So if I see your name pop on, you can choose either the stripe or the rainbow pattern and I'll send you one of those, all right? So um, I'll watch for your name to pop up, but I do have your email address, so I can always email you as well. All right, so with that said, um, I had my team gathering on Wednesday, and um, it's really fun to get together every single month and learn about everybody's goals, um, big or small, and it could be as simple as cleaning your craft room or picking up after Christmas, or learning to stamp in a different technique like watercoloring or block stamping, something like that. So my goal for February is to stamp with my um, sister-in-laws and my nieces. So this weekend I'm going to reach out to them to see if they want to do that in the month of February. That would be kind of fun. And I'll travel up north, and um, maybe we could make a girls' night out of it. So um, that's my goal for February. And um, with that said, we had a team gathering. And don't forget about the um, special signing um, 
up with Stampin' Up! Even if you're a hobby stamper, everyone on my team is a hobbyist. And there are um, 16 or 17, 16 plus me currently. Um, so celebration is always a great time to join Stampin' Up! And when you join Stampin' Up!, yes, you do have to give your personal information like your bank account and your social security number, but that's because there is you are an independent demonstrator, um, and it's in case you um, make any money, like, or, you know, if, and you, if you're just a hobby stamper, you're probably not going to be, um, you know, having to... Um, Having to, uh, you know, uh, report to the IRS, like a 1099 is what I wanted to say. Um, I do because I do, this is part of my business. So, um, mo like I said, most of the people on my team, Inspired Daisies, are hobby stampers. And with that said, there's always some kind of signing bonus um, involved. So, for this time, up until now until February 28th, you can earn or select, excuse me, two free stamp sets when you join Stampin' Up. So my information is here. I would love to have you as um, an Inspired Daisy on my team. And if you have any questions, please let me know. Um, I will gladly help you out either by email, messenger, text messaging, or just simply give me a call. My whole information is right there. You can copy it down. Um, and most of my... Um, I think every single one of my uh, Inspired Daisies members were past customers of mine. So make sure you're looking at how much you're spending on a quarterly basis. Um, there is a, um, so if you join right now, your quarter doesn't start until next quarter. Um, so you have a lot of time and any of those sales um, now will count towards um, your celebration and all that. So. Um, you do have about five months to make that first quarter, but then after that, every quarter, it's $300 minimum. So, um, and some people don't have a problem with that, um, and some people like to split up their orders until, and hope, you know, maybe have a stamping event with their, their siblings or friends or relatives, and it's a kit night, and those sales will go towards that quarterly minimum. So... Um, I would love to speak with you about that, and we're always looking for inspired daisies, and we have them all throughout the United States. So with that said, again, these are the cards I made and showed my team how to make. They are um, actually, uh, this one I flubbed up, so <laughs> um, I totally messed up this one, but I'm going to, um, that's the one I was trying to make. Um, this is my example, and I did not like that ribbon after I got it all done. Um, so I switched it out to this one, but I hope I don't make the mistake I made on Wednesday night with this card because it is an easel card. So it will, it's, it's scored differently and then it sits like this on your like table or nightstand or wherever you display your cards. So that's a fun one we're going to make tonight and hopefully I don't mess up. And then here's one, which is super cool. It uses five and a half by 12 designer series paper, and it's a simple pop up or pop out, pop out card. Um, so when you open it up, you get this and then this. So it's really, really easy, you guys. Um, and I did change this one up on my team um, meeting. And today I'm going to be using a different designer series paper for this card here. Um, so let me just get everything out i've got it hopefully as organized as i can be and um, we're going to create this one first um so i've got everything in a little basket today so i can be super organized um so this is the free paper you can earn during celebration and i'm gonna move this out of the way here um, so with celebration, with a $50 order um, prod in product, you can earn this free paper. And it's found on page four, and there's some examples on page five. Um, and it's very springy, got lots of daffodils in it and just different spring flowers. And it's called Daffodil Afternoon. It's a 12 by 12. Um, 
and so with a $50 order, and you can see right here the circle, um, is what you would need to spend. So um, the stamp set that I'm using comes from uh, Friendly Hello, and that's on page 12, and more samples are on page 13. So with this one, it's a little bit different. If you have a product order, order of $100, this one's been super popular. You get this beautiful designer series paper, which we used, I think it was last week, or I've used it. Um, and it's called Friendly Hello, and it's teamed up with the Friendly Hello stamp set. Um, so, and it's got lots of different, um, this is a great stamp set, I think, for beginner stampers. One is the photopolymer stamp set. Also, it's got some really nice sentiments and you've got some floral images along with some um, foliage there you got those speckles there and you've got this fun little bird that you can color in with whatever coloring tools that you have so a really nice set now say your your order's 150 well you could get this and you could get that um daffodil afternoon um paper as well so Every $50 that you spend, you can earn something free during celebration. Celebration again ends on February 28th. So let's take a look at some of that really pretty paper. Um, I am using white, basic white with it, but um, people have been using more of a vanilla color. Um, one, because like if you flip on this side it's definitely vanilla but if you look on this side i think there's white in there like some of that looks white so to my eyes and my eyes are getting old um but um so you can kind of see the here's the front side and then the back side so what i'll do is i'm going to flip these over so you can kind of see well let me do that and then i'll flip them back over so there's the daffodils. Now this is really fun, a great scrapbooking piece. You could cut this to six by 12 and have a nice little um, border on the bottom of your paper. Or you can cut this. And now these, this is six by 12, sorry. I should have said this was originally 12 by 12, but um, this is my full pack of six by 12. I used um, this paper for a paper share um, and this was a bonus pack. Some were, um, people got six by six papers, so um, I just am showing it this way. And then this is the paper I used for this card here. Okay. And then here's some, it's got lots of greens, of course. You've got Evening Evergreen, Mossy Meadow, Old Olive. Flirty Flamingos in there too, Petal Pink, and Basic Black. And crushed curry the paper that i'm going to be using on tonight's card um we haven't found it yet i will get it though it's getting close it's going to be the last one it's going to be this one right here okay hopefully that will work uh, but i love this uh, this background too so um really really see look at this like now if you team the papers up together like that looks really, um, really nice. And then here's this one teamed up together. Um, black really looks good with lots of different colors. There's a highlight color. And then there you've got that petal pink. And then here's the one I used before. It's got little green hearts. I think those are old olive. And then here's this one and it's teamed up with a diagonal stripe so that's super fun and then here's this one with the squares kind of anyway that's the paper we're going to be using and i clip my paper with one of these little binder clips i find that's very useful um, the stamp set I'm using again, I've used this one. Um, you've seen me use this one before. It's like my favorite stamp set um, out of the mini catalog. I can't move on onto many more stamp sets because I should be, but I love this one. It's called Blessings of Home and it's a cling stamp set, as you can see. It's got the red rubber on it. 
and I'm going to use that really big floral image. Um, it fits on an E block, so E is an Edward. Um, let's see what else is in my bin. Here's the envelope that goes with the card. I've got two here. My kit is here. Simple sizes, you guys. It's not that hard to create this one. Um, the ink colors, I'm choosing Mossy Meadow and Pool Party. Also Memento, because we're going to be blending colors. These fabulous iridescent rhinestones are wonderful. They come in three different sizes, so we've got the small ones, mediums, and you get a lot of the a lot of the small ones, and then it goes up into the larger side here on the right. So they're really sparkly and fun to use. Um, here's another stamp that I'm going to be using. It's going to be our focal point, and that is on an eye block. Eye block is my newest block um, from. My, for my block inventory and then with the special moments stamp set I'm going to be using um, thanks for brightening up my day also where would I be without a friend like you question mark and then thanks a really tiny thanks um, I've got Wink of Stella and I have for blends, I have dark and light flirty flamingo and dark and light um, old olive. That's it. Okay. And then here's that paper we're going to be using. So I'm going to need my stamp and trimmer to cut this down because I wanted to show you um, when you're cutting directional paper which way you need to, to um, cut it. So let me just move this box off to the other table. Isn't this really pretty, you guys? It's so super pretty. All right, I'm going to see if there's any other questions. Oh, Tracy, you're not late. You're not late. We're just getting started. Okay, we are going to be making two of the cards that I made at my team gathering. Both of them I actually messed up. So for today, I went... To I was on my lunch break, 30 minute lunch break. I said, I'm going to go get out of this office and I'm going to go, go to a like, dollar. What was it? Family dollar. And I found this candle. I don't know if I can tip it or not, but I won't tip it, but it says focus in balance with white ginger and amber. It's a scented candle. I just lit it up. So I'm going to hopefully have some focus and balance for you guys tonight because I really screwed up, but I didn't really screw up the this one here, but the other one I did for my team. And I hope some of my team members are actually watching. Um, if they're not, they'll they'll see this a little bit later. Okay, so now this is a directional paper, meaning that it can only go one way. So look at the daffodils here, and oh, Lynn from Australia. Well, thank you so much for for watching. Um, so this is. See, this is directional because if you turn it this way, well, your daffodils are going to the left. You don't know, that doesn't work. And then this way, they're going upside down. And then this way, they're going to the right. So you got to make sure that when you cut your paper, that you're cutting it the correct way. And the size you want is five and a half by 12. So, and um, this is, where's my card? It's going to be going this way. Okay, so you want your daffodils to be going upwards, okay? So when you cut your paper, so that means I need to rotate it this way, and I am going to cut it at five and a half inches. So that means you can make two cards out of one sheet of the designer series paper. And I have to cut this paper, and I'm really nervous about it, but if I don't cut it, then I won't use it. It's so pretty, um, and it's got a lot of my favorite colors in it. I love how they highlighted just the center of those flowers with that pink color. So, all right, so now it's five and a half by 12. I'm going to rotate the paper, and we're going to score it. So with the stamp and trimmer, we have the scoring blade and the cutting blade here. So I want to make sure I'm not going to cut. So that is way up there. And I'm gonna score this at four inches. Okay, so I go up and down. And when you're scoring designer series paper, you need to make sure 
that you do not press um, really hard because if you press really hard, you're definitely going to go through the paper. Don't want to do that. So just a light touch. And then I'm going to extend out my um, arm here on the trimmer. It goes all the way to 17 inches. So super long for that 11 by 17 paper, I guess that you need some people cut. I don't, but um, anyway, so four inches and then line it over here at six. So four and six. Make sure that cutter cutting blade's out of the way. So that's six. And then we're going to slide it way over to eight. Okay, so at eight inches, we're going to score lightly up and back. So four, six, and eight. Easy, easy, right? Okay, we're done with that. I'm going to hang this back up on my wall. Get it out of the way. All right, so now what you're going to want to do is we're going to just fold the lines and I'm just going to give them a nice press with my fingertips. Just get them going. All right, and we got one more somewhere right here. Okay, so now this is very important how you're going to fold this. Think of it kind of as a book in the beginning. So you're so I made sure that my flowers are going up. They're going towards the top of this paper here, the white paper. Now I'm going to take this one over here and I'm going to fold it just like that because that's going to be the front. Then this piece here in the middle is going to come towards you. And think of it as a mountain top, a ridge line. Okay, so that ridge line is always at the top. And think of Karen hiking up Mount Mansfield in Vermont this summer and going all the way across the ridge line in one day. And hopefully it's not bad weather day because that would be horrible. Okay, so that's the ridge line. So then you're gonna go like this. Okay, then, oh wait, I showed my team to, to go this way to the left. And then this side here is folded like a book. Okay, I just folded it over, we're done our book. Okay, so I'm gonna do that one more time. So lay out your paper like this, five and a half by 12, scored at four, six, and eight. So this one comes here. This one comes up to the middle as the ridge line, the mountain. I'm gonna turn it this way, and then this one comes over, and you're done your book. So you'll look like this, okay? Like that. So we're done with this right now. That was easy. The next piece you're gonna need are, um, of course, your basic white envelope. I'm using the die cut from Tasteful Labels. Okay, that was a nice little die cut that I thought would be a good size. And then I have um, two pieces of Old Olive and two pieces of basic white, okay? And these are cut three and a quarter by, wait, no, that's not right. Oh, I was gonna try to do this from memory. Oh yes, now I got it. Um, three by four, so three by four, three, three by four, two of the same color. And then this is just a quarter inch smaller at two and three quarters by three and three quarters. Okay, and then here is our white. And you'll need a strip that's a half of an inch wide. So this is a strip from when I cut my paper down to make lots of inside card bases. I've got a whole stack here ready to go for um, my card club. I'm gonna be doing that next week. Um, so I take a whole pack of the four by, or the um, basic white um, and there's 40 sheets in there. And when I get it, one of the packs and I need some, I just cut all of them to four by five and a quarter because that's my standard um, size in the cards. And I go through quite a bit of those um, in card club, probably two packs of white. So I just like to do them all at once. And I use a heavy duty trimmer to do that. Okay, so we're gonna do some stamping. I've got an extra label in case I really flub up. These we don't need. Um, so the first one here is got that floral image. We're going to stamp that in base or memento black. So I've got my memento black here. And here's that foliage that I'm going to be inking up. 
And for me, I like the control of just taking my memento black to the red rubber. And I just kind of tap it and I kind of do a happy dance on it. That's just me. I don't know why I do it, but I do it. Okay. Then I'm going to take this paper here, the white. I'm going to set it right in front of me. And hopefully I won't drop that stamp right on that white because, oh, wait a minute, this is hard to see. I'm off to the side because the camera's right in my face here. All right, so I'm just gonna stamp this down and try not to rock that block and see what we get. Okay, that's a pretty good image. So we're done with that one. Then the next one we need to do is we need to stamp the two labels on the inside. Okay, so let's take this one here. Um, we're gonna use Pool Party this time. And this is the big stamp I'm gonna use to make a background stamp image. So this is a huge stamp. So I like to go with the ink pad right to the stamp. I have so much more control that way, making sure I get all of it. Now I'm not gonna stamp that whole image on that white, but I will just like to do it out of habit. <laughs> Um, so I'm going to take this one and I'm going to angle it up towards the middle. Oh, shoot. This is supposed to be second generation ink. Hmm. Well, isn't that beautiful? I'm going to try. I am going to try to go with it. If I don't like it, I will have I wanted second generation ink. So we've got first generation ink on the other side. And now we're gonna do second generation. We'll figure out which one we like. So I'm gonna stamp off, and then we're gonna stamp over here, uh, just a lighter image. So that's the lighter one, and that's the darker one. Okay, so we're gonna set that one aside. Now let's bring in that Tasteful Labels die. Now on the Tasteful label dies, they have an etching around the edge. So make sure you're stamping on that correct size side because on the um, opposite side it's kind of scratchy and it's not as pleasant as this side so again we're going to do second generation inking for sure on this one okay so that means i'm going to stamp off over here and then i'm going to try to fill in as much as i can on that tasteful labels die Okay, that's got that huge floral image in the middle. If you wanted to add a little bit of color here and here, all you need to do is take your stamp here, and then I'm gonna stamp off, and then I'm just gonna come in here and grab that little foliage that's over there and stamp off, and then maybe grab this one over here, just a hint of that image that's on that stamp over there. So that kind of filled it in. And if you don't like that, well, then you can just leave it as is, or you could kind of stamp it all like this, but then your your floral image would be going like wrong. It'd be going sideways, okay? Next thing we'll need to do is we need to find that envelope, which is right here. This is a test. I'm testing myself to be super organized tonight and not like having a huge messy desk. That will be like crazy. If I can get that down, um, that is another goal of mine is try to keep my desk as clean as I can so I can not have to wait and try to find things. Okay, so I just inked that up in Pool Party ink and I just stamped it onto that white envelope. If you want, you can open up your flap and we can really pretty up that envelope flap. You can either use your designer series paper or you can take a stamp set. Take one of those floral images and we're gonna stamp it right there. If you want, just leave it like that or you can ink it up again and come sideways. Ink it up again and go sideways on this side. So then you have an envelope flap that looks like that. If you don't like all these white gaps, that's easy. We're just gonna fold or turn it around this way. I'm going to ink up this um, side of the stamp here that looks more like a triangle. It's got that point of floral image or the um, foliage image right here. Okay, so I'm gonna aim up into that kind of triangle area. 
and stamp right there. And then I'll do the same thing. Maybe I want a different image. So I'm gonna look at this area over here and I'm gonna sneak this in right there so we don't have the same image. So if you wanna flap like that and adding in that color, there's an option for you too. So that side and then here's that really pretty front side. You still have plenty of room for your address and your return address as well up there. So that is our envelope. One more thing we need to stamp um, is the thanks and also the uh, messages that go on those. So let me slide this over off to the side. We're gonna close up pool party and then I'm gonna bring in Mossy Meadow. And then this is just a half of an inch tall. It doesn't really matter how long it is, at least uh, it's gotta be at least an inch and a half long. I'm gonna stamp thanks right in the middle there. Then I'm going to take this one here. We'll, we'll experiment. And let's see, these are photopolymer stamps. I should be having my um, piercing mat underneath, but I'm gonna wing it tonight. Uh, maybe I won't, because I want. I don't want to get smudges. So I am going to. Don't have my. Don't have my uh, piercing mat, but I have this. You can do this book. It's a journal book. Now remember, this is first generation ink. I think it's going to be a little too dark, but we're going to try it out and see what it looks like. Oh, it doesn't look too bad. And we can experiment and see because we've got two sides of every paper, especially if it's white. And then we've got Mossy Meadow on a second generation background. So we've got that side and we have that side. Um, let me see, I think I really love this, but I think it's gonna, your, your message is gonna get lost. So I think you need to go with a lighter background so that those words will pop. Okay, so now we've got this one here, and our stamp set is, here I go, I lost it, no, it's right there. Okay, thanks for brightening up my day. So I'm gonna ink this one up with Mossy Meadow again, and I'm just gonna stamp right over that large floral piece. Okay, super fun, right? That is all set. We are all done with our stamping. So let's close this up. And I've got my bin over there. You guys are gonna be so proud of me, I hope. <laughs> okay. So now I've got to color in this little image here. So I will zoom in so you can see it a little bit better, hopefully. I'm just gonna wait for my laptop to catch up. Okay, yeah, I can get in a little bit closer probably. Okay, so for me, when I color and use my Stampin' Blends, I kind of like to work in the image that's like the most prominent color or size. So I'm gonna start with the smaller flower here and I'm using La Flirty Flamingo again. And I'm just gonna, you guys have seen me color this floral image at least once. You're gonna see me do it again because I just love this stamp set. It's so beautiful. I hope they carry this one over to the annual catalog. If you don't have it and you really like to color or you either watercolor or use blends, watercolor pencils, any type of coloring, then I highly suggest this should be on your list. Make it one of your items that you um, would like to earn that afternoon uh, daffodil paper, and then you could um, have that paper as well for free. So um, that's that paper, um, little flower. Now these little ones, I'm just doing taps around the shading portion there's like, I think five flowers over here. 
Okay, I think I got them all. So we're gonna slide the cap on. Blends come with a chisel point, I call it, and a brush tip. Now I'm going to take the lighter shade of Flirty Flamingo and I'm just going to do my circle coloring. And these do squeak. After a while, they sound like little mice. My cat loves to find mice outside and plays with them. <laughs> Once in a while, I will hear one crying for help. <laughs> and if I see that happen, I might rescue that little mouse. <laughs> All right, so I'm just taking my markers here, or my, not my markers. You could also use the Stampin' Write markers. You just need to change your stays on your black ink from Memento to stays on, and um, you can color with Stampin' um, Write markers. Okay, so I'm just being very careful there. All right, so that's that one. Probably gonna go over this a little bit more. It's just a little too light for me. Now I'm just gonna find these little ones here and just color these in. I'll probably go back over these once I get the green in there. Okay, now let's take my dark. I always go dark. Some people go light and then dark. I like to start with dark and do my shading. So I'm just doing some little small like brush strokes here right where that darker um, image is on the leaves. Okay, and then there's one over here, and there's a bunch here. Okay, I think I got all the darks that I want. Now I'm gonna use the lighter one. And again, this is Old Olive. And I'm gonna start at 12 o'clock and then I'm gonna just kinda of go around the clock. That's kinda of how I operate. How many of you guys have Stampin' Blends? You've tried them and do you have a favorite way of um, using them? Like, do you start dark or do you start with a lighter layer of color and then work it, work it, um, work it that way? Let us know how you guys um, and what what's your favorite coloring tool? Is it the blends? Is it the pencils, the watercolor pencils, stamp and write markers, or is it watercoloring? Let us know in the comment box. We would all love to, to know from one another what everybody uses. So these little stems here, you gotta go really controlled. That's why I like the chisel point. And I think I'm getting my, um, well, I gotta mark this on my, my list of things to order. I need another old olive, dark and light, because they're getting down to the end of that barrel let me try to see if there's some on the brush oh and this brush tip got totally damaged at one of my classes so we're just gonna let me see shake it up <laughs> okay okay the rest i'm gonna just use the dark and do some really light coloring Okay. Oh, Jeannie Ann's here. You won one of the cards, okay? So you need to let me know. Send me an email. Um, do you, because YouTube does not allow me to go back in and write, write any answers to comments for some reason. So you get the striped one or the um, Misty Moonlight with the rainbows. Let me know which one you want. Sorry, that's like really close in your face. Um, but you won uh, one of those cards, so just let me know which one you want, but just send me an email. Okay, I'm just going to color these in now. The centers, I want green. And I really don't want it that dark. So 
Let's see if we've got any, whoops, any ink left. It's been, there we go. It was sitting there long enough so I can get a lighter shade here. That'll be okay if one's a little bit darker and one's lighter. Okay, so we've got that colored in. The next thing you can do is take your Wink of Stella, it's so pretty, with the Wink of Stella and just lightly give those flowers a little bit of shimmer with the glittered Wink of Stella. It's so pretty. I have one customer that will use Wink of Stella on just about anything she can. and a little bit in the middle too okay make sure you do wipe this tip off because the ink will come into the barrel on the brush there so that's kind of what it looks like let me just bring it a little bit closer so you can kind of see hopefully you can see the wink of stella i can see it believe me it's beautiful okay so now i'm gonna zoom out that was smooth i did that one smooth <laughs> okay so now we're just gonna assemble. It's so much fun to put this one together. So we just gotta be careful um, of how we do it. So um, on the front, let's we'll go with the front first because that's the easiest. So we're gonna take this and mount it onto the, the old olive. So let me find my stamp and seal. And then um, light touch when you're using the stamp and seal. If you use a really too much pressure then it's not going to work so trust me I am learning still learning how to use stamp and seal but the more you use it with a lighter touch you're going to do just fine okay so those are two together and that's the lighter background with pool party and then this is the um, darker first generation I think this this message gets lost so I'm gonna go with the lighter um, second generation um, stamping. Somebody just posted a comment, Susan. Oh yes, yep. Thank you for your comment, Susan T, appreciate that. Okay, so now we've got, this is three, so this is again, the green is old office three by four, and then this is two and three quarters this way by two, wait, two and three quarters by three and three quarters. Oh, that's a hard one to say. I'm usually say eighths of an inch. Okay, so now we're going to take this focal point here, no ribbon on this card, and we need to pop it up because it's gonna get lost in those background flowers. So there's no, there's no if, ands, or buts. You definitely need to pop this up. Let's get it away from all the busyness of that beautiful paper and pop up that focal point. Okay, I'm gonna use my take your pick tool to get those backings off. Easy, real easy to do it that way. They're all together, just pinch them like that and I throw them in my bucket I have on my table here. Okay, so now we're gonna add this right to the front. You could have used Evening Evergreen or Mossy Meadow or Old Olive. So you have three different, um, three different ink or uh, cardstock colors to choose what green you want. So love that. You could probably also use um, Pear Pizzazz if you have that in your stash and you don't have the other colors. Pear Pizzazz would look just fine. Okay, so now we're gonna take this piece here and we're gonna add it to this side, okay, right here. And since this is the side you're going to write your little note on, your message to the recipient, this gets stuck down. Um, no dimensionals, you just gotta use, whoops, you gotta use your stamp and seal, okay? And then just center it on this piece here Look at the top, the bottom, 
And then my score lines here, the left and the right. Get it centered as best as you can. Okay, so now the pop out. Okay, so if you put this adhesive on the whole thing here, then it's going to get stuck. Okay, it's going to stick to this side and that's not going to work. So you need to do um, put adhesive on about half of it. And you got to be careful when you adhere it down that you don't go over that score line. And I know that score line is really hard for you to see. Um, so what I do is I just kind of layer it on here for right now. You could pop this up on Stampin' Dimensionals too, if you wanted to. And I, you know what, I'm gonna show you how to do that. So, so put Stampin' Seal on here if you don't have Stampin' Dimensionals, that will work. Or you can use Stampin' Dimensionals, and I know I need to put it on this side here. So let me find them, they're over here. Somehow they got to the left of me. We're gonna put three on here. So one up there, one here, and then one at the point there. So press them down really well. Use your take your pick tool, stab those, and there we go. Now, we're gonna add this. Now I'm being careful because there's a score line. I wanna make sure that still folds. And I also want to Make sure that it's straight as best as I can get it straight and then press down. Now my Stampin' Dimensional was right here. I could feel it right here, right here, and then right there, okay? So next step is to take that thanks. This is one of the things I forgot um, on Wednesday was to put the sentiment on the front. So we will do that. You're gonna need um, your paper trimmers, really sharp scissors. I like to angle cut this. It's a really small sentiment. And these strips work really nicely. I just keep them on my desk. This one here I wanna pop up. You can use a regular um, dimensional, regular size like this. You can use an edge piece, which is this piece here. Okay, it's half of one. Or you can use mini Stampin' Dimensionals. Those are always nice to have in your craft room. And the basic um, or the black Stampin' Dimensionals, they come mixed um, with the regular size and the minis. So if you would like dark dimensionals, dark colored, then basic black is your choice. So now we're just gonna add the sentiment to wherever you want it down on that stem. I think it looks good down there. Then we're gonna use those beautiful iridescent rhinestones. The basic jewels are in the mini catalog and um, they look fabulous. Now, these are really big. I think they are they could be a little bit too big, so I'm gonna jump down to the next largest size. I'm just gonna add three. So one, and let's go to the next size down. We'll add another one there. And then the smallest one, and we're gonna over here. So two in the lower corner and one in the upper left corner. So now the final, final, and Karen did not cut that paper, just like Wednesday night. So we are going to cut it together. So I'm wondering, because I was thinking about this on my way home. So I don't know if you noticed on the sample card, there's this little white trim of paper here okay what it is is it's five or four and a quarter by five and a half okay and it gives that nice little white edge i think daffodil delight or old olive will work a little bit better so i'm going to go over to my file cabinet grab some old olive grab some daffodil delight and we're going to experiment so let me just Hustle over here. Olive, daffodil delight. Okay. So, before I cut the paper, I'm going to decide. So, I'm just going to pretend. Ooh, that looks nice. That's what it would look. Don't, don't look at this side. 
that's what it's gonna look like with the daffodil delight showing through, okay? That pulls from the daffodil over here. But if you want old olive and it would match this panel here, then, oh, that looks good too. Uh, this is a tough decision. I'm gonna have to go back to old olive because you don't look at this, just look at this over here, okay? Do I like that or do I like the daffodil? Oh, it's so hard. I like both of them. Hmm. All right. Daffodil or old olive. Whoever answers first gets to gets the choice. Daffodil. Okay, we got two for two. All right, yellow brains it up. So we're going with daffodil. Thank you so much for helping me out making that decision. Okay, so that means I have to cut this piece of paper. This was a card base because I've already have it scored. So let's see if I can get it at four and a quarter right on that score line. So five and a half, four and a quarter. Another thing you could do is instead of lining it up on over here on the edge edge, you could kind of center it so you have the yellow on both sides, but I kind of like it just on this side, so I think that's what I'm gonna do. So now you're gonna wanna put your adhesive on the designer series paper, and it's really hard for you to see, but um, there is a score line there. So, and you need to do it on all the edges there. So I'm just gonna go along that way. Then I'll start from the score line and go towards the bottom on both sides. Where is that? Right about there. And then over here, straight down. And maybe a little bit right there. Okay, so now I'm going to take this piece and Line up the score line down at the bottom. Okay, then I'm gonna press from this side. Now, if you get a little bit of adhesive like I did on your designer series paper, um, we used to sell the erasers. Um, we don't anymore. Um, you can find them on Amazon. Um, this is a, an eraser that will take glue off your paper and you can see it's disgusting but i've had this thing for probably i don't know 11 years 12 years something like that okay so that is that's the front oh that looks really pretty right this is going to be a card club card i'm pretty sure next month okay i'm not sure what paper i'm going to use but this i love this so then we open it up like this and we got this little pop up here and then open it there. So everything coordinates. And I like that little yellow there. It looks really nice. And I'm glad we went with yellow. It just, it was a nice pop of color. Okay, so that is your first card for tonight. And here's the example in the white. You can see the difference, like total, totally love the yellow. Okay, so that's that one. Next card up is the tricky one. And we're hoping Karen gets it right because it's pretty. Um, uh, an easel card. Okay, so it's going to look like this when you're finished, hopefully. Okay, uh, but this one is the one I made Wednesday night with my team members. And I forgot that the adhesive does not go on this part up here. I couldn't make it into an easel card. So it just is your regular card with a score line there, which does not look good. And I also thought that tonight we would take some paper and cover up this side and see what um, we get. So it's just so that we can cover up that score line. I'm not sure what paper I'll use right yet, but um, we'll figure that out together. Okay, so let me get this area cleaned up and I'm gonna put everything away. You guys can take a break if you need to go get your hot beverage or cold beverage of choice. This is your commercial chit chat amongst everybody. 
and I'm going to just clean my stamps with my stamp and scrub so I can put these all back in my bin and that way I'm picking up my desk <laughs> and I have so much more room to work with that was easy let me grab my bin move these out of the way and we're just gonna put everything back in here and this color too I actually think I need you know what I do need the mossy metal so I'm gonna grab that I think that's all I need yes Okay, I'm gonna turn off my heater because my room is finally warm enough so I can not really get so hot and sweaty in here. My craft room has the oldest windows in this house and we're gonna get our windows replaced this summer. So in the winter time, we can heat really definitely feel a breeze. So that's why I have a little space heater in my room here and. It does a great job and it gets my room nice and warm, but not in the beginning. Okay, so let's look at this one. Here we go. What we need for this one is, let's see, stamp set I'm using again. Um, I'm, so I'm using annual catalog products and I'm using um, celebration products with um, some mini catalog products as well, meaning the ribbon. So we're going back to Daisy Lane. This is a cling stamp set. It's been around for a few years um, and they both have punches here, a large punch and a medium punch. I'm gonna be using the medium punch, although I'm not going to be stamping. I'm only gonna be using this fern here. Okay, so that's that stamp set. Then the other one is going to be the special moments. Again, this is a free stamp set in celebration with a hundred dollar product order. We need some flirty flamingo scrap. And again, Mossy Meadow is our ink. I've got this, the beautiful frayed ribbon. Now this is on back order and you wonder why, because it's just beautiful and it's really soft. Okay. Very, very soft and it's thick. So we're going to need Stampin' Dimensionals for this one. Um, let's see what else here. We have our designer series paper again. This is two by five. Here's our stamp that says just a little um, high from me. So we're going to change this one up a little bit. And then we have our flirty flamingo, four and a quarter four and a quarter by 11, we're not scoring it yet. Then I've got my medium daisy punch. I have a piece of basic white, four by five and a quarter. I have another piece of basic white, which is three and three quarters by five. No, I lied, hold on. This one I need to cut down because I grabbed it from my stash. Um, this Mossy Meadow is three and three quarters by five, I think. Hold on. No. It should be. Let me think. Hold on. Put myself on the spot because I wanted more of that. I didn't want to do eights this time, but it looks like I didn't cut my paper that way. So this needs to be five, which it is. This needs to be bigger. So I need a mossy meadow. So we're gonna need my trimmer anyway. So let's do the trimmer work first, or part of it. Okay, let's grab it off the wall. Do you guys store your Stampin' Trimmer on the wall? I love this little hole here. I've got one of those hooks and um, it just is on my wall and it's great. Okay, I'm gonna do this one 
Yeah. So I want five and a quarter by four. I think. Oh gosh. Yeah. And then the next layer, the white. I'm so used to working with eighths of an inch. Literally, this is drive me crazy. This needs to be five and three and three quarters. So let me just make sure everything is good. And I just, yep. Okay, so we are all good. Let me just grab one of these over here. Throw that one over there. Okay, I think I've got it. So we're gonna go back to the flirty flamingo. Again, this is four and a quarter by 11. We need to score it in half at five and a half. Okay, oops, grit this one up there, get your scoring, okay. We're gonna go back to the trimmer because it's easier for me to remember it this way. So we've got our line here. We're gonna burnish this. I'm gonna fold it and then I'm gonna take my bone folder to give it a nice burnish so that it does lie flat. Open it up um, this way here, okay? It's easier to put the white on first, meaning this side, okay? and then work with the front. For me it is at least. So I'm gonna take that um, four by five and a quarter. I need to stamp on it first because we don't wanna adhere this down and then stamp on that flirty flamingo. So we're gonna use our Mossy Meadow ink and I'm gonna do like first, second, and third generation um, stamping. So we're gonna get full strength and I'm angling it this way because it's easier for me to stamp this way. So I'm making sure the end of that um, fern is off to the edge. One, two, and three. Okay, so we have um, one, two, and three. So that created lots of depth. So the darker one is in the front. And then this one is second level and then third level. Then I'm gonna ink this up again. I'm going to stamp off. Then I'm just going to apply pressure to the top part of that fern. Mm, piece of hair in there. Um, and then we're going to just stamp there. And then we're going to do another generation, second generation stamp there. If you wanted to just stamp a little bit over here, you can do that. So I'm just giving pressure to the top part of that fern with my index finger. And that kind of shows a nice array of different um, depths of the the fern. Then what we need to do is we can flip this one over and we can add our adhesive. Let's bring in our card base. Again, flirty flamingo, four and a quarter by 11, scored at five and a half. And we've got equal borders, top, bottom, left, and right. Okay. Now, the tricky part. <laughs> it can be tricky. So I'm going to take my example and I'll lay it in front of me so I do this correctly. The, my first attempt at this card, I did it backwards. So let's bring in our stamp and trimmer and we want our scoring blade. And what we want to do is we want to take this corner here, so the top left, we want to make sure that it's in the track here where that blade will go and we want to get it all the way down to this corner here. Um, let me zoom in a little bit. Hopefully, let me just see. Okay, yep. So hopefully you can see this. Let me just a little bit more. Okay, so I've got this corner kind of embedded up here. And then I have this score line that's the half mark in the little track there. So I'm gonna take my blade and I'm just going to score it so at a diagonal, okay? So far so good. Now, what you're gonna to wanna to do is you're going to burnish it. 
I'm gonna burnish it both ways. Just lightly, light touch. Okay, so now it looks like this. Here's that score line. Again, I said I'm gonna cover this side up today with you guys. So it's gonna be an experiment. All right, so the biggest thing is I can't goof up this time. All right, I'm gonna bring the card here that is the one that works correctly. Because you can see, look, I screwed up. So never put adhesive on this side, okay? Or else it's not gonna do that nice little fold for you. So um, let's use our Mossy Meadow. And what do we have on the ins? Okay. Um, okay. We need to stamp. Let me stamp again. We need to create this fern here. Okay. And to do that, we're going to do the same thing. Mossy Meadow with the Daisy Lane fern. And it doesn't matter. Um, it doesn't matter down here because it's gonna get covered up, okay? So I'm just gonna go first, second, third generation. Then let's ink up again. I'm gonna stamp off, and then I'm just gonna throw in a little bit of those upper ferns that away, and maybe we'll do one this way, okay? Because I have a small sentiment that's gonna go over here, and I'm not gonna stamp this until um, later. Okay, the next step is to take your designer series paper, which is in my little box here. And again, this is directional paper. So again, we don't want our tulips, or daffodils, excuse me, uh, going the incorrect way. So we don't wanna put them on that way, folks, right? We wanna make sure we're going this way. This is two by five. So easy number to remember. Grab my stamp and seal. And I'm just going to add it to all four sides. Okay, let's bring this back into the picture. I'm going to go this way for me. It's easier. Oh, gosh. I think I'm not zoomed in too much. I forget to zoom out, but I think it's better if I'm in close. Okay. Again, it doesn't matter down here. Next thing we're going to add is that frayed ribbon. So this is three quarters of an inch wide. It's super soft um, and it's basic white. So we're going to cut this down to size. So about a half of an inch off the edge. If you want, you can use your stamp and seal plus for this step. So we're gonna flip it over and add our Stamp and Seal. Stamp and Seal Plus is super, super sticky. It's like score tape. You can use Scotch tape too if you don't have Stamp and Seal Plus, but I love to have it on my desk just for something like this. Now, what I want to do is get my silicone craft sheet because this will protect my work surface and we can kind of figure it out. I'm holding it in place with my three, my two fingers here, okay? And then I'm going to come around like this. Just make sure it's secure, it's super secure, okay? It's a little bit crooked. Okay, next thing is to stamp. <laughs> and I always don't like to do this um, at the end but it's easier to see where depending on where that ribbon goes is where you kind of just need to visualize um your sentiment but I, I actually like to put it on after that way i can center it a little bit better than if i was just to wing it okay so just a little high for me this is going to get popped up on stampin dimensionals just because that ribbon height is pretty thick and we don't want that card to fall apart in the mail. So while I'm searching for my Stampin' Dimensionals, there they are, uh, we're gonna add five, okay? 
So let's add five and um, then press them down real good. So do you guys think that white ginger and amber candle that is like focus and balance has me like focused and balanced tonight? I don't know. Monday I was quite energetic. Um, I was just so happy to be stamping with somebody. Um, even though you guys are far away, it doesn't matter. Um, I feel like you're like in my craft room. So, and I've like known you forever. Okay, so here we go. Um, actually, hold on. We're going to put this on first because it's going to be easier. Let me just, I don't think I cut that. You know, I still didn't cut it right because I didn't grab the right one. That's the one I had wrong. Okay, yes. Okay, four by five and a quarter, folks. All right, so I'm just going to take my stamp and seal, add four lines to it. And then this gets centered right down on top of that flirty flamingo. Now we can add this one. And then this gets centered on the mossy meadow, pressing those four corners and then the middle. Okay, now we're going to take the medium daisy punch. I love the medium daisy punch. And hopefully I have enough here to make four. So we're gonna punch out four of these little daisies. Um, that has a score line in it, unfortunately. But let's see if I can do it. Mm, that's not going to work. So I was trying to use a scrap. Hold on. I'm going to get my steps in today no matter what. Okay, here's a scrap. I like to use every piece I can, so I'll save that for something else. Okay, so now we're going to create our little daisy, and you'll want mini glue dots for this, or you can use um, uh, liquid glue. Those are the two I would suggest. I'm going to take my daisy, add it to the stand, uh, mini glue dot. Then I'm going to add it to the other one and I'm going to off center it so it fills in the gaps. Okay, so there's one. We're gonna repeat that process. So find a mini glue dot, press it, the daisy onto the mini glue dot, give it a nice little press, then peel it off slowly. You don't want to peel off one of those petals. Again, we're going to offset it so we're filling in the gaps. I'm going to add Wink Estella to this one, but not until the end because I didn't do it on the other one, so I want you to see a difference. Now we're going to, um, I'm going to flip those over because that's the back side in my brain. We're going to take our mini, mini stamp and dimensionals for this one. So let me grab those. And I like to take them off with my take your pick tool. And a lot of times that little backing comes off at the same time. Okay. Now, um, the focal point, it's going to go, so I need to aim that mini dimensional right over here on this cardstock because you don't want to put it on the ribbon because it's going to fall off. So we're gonna aim it up here. So the background here is the foliage. So give it good press. Now the, oh, you guys, I did it again. Oh my gosh. Oh, you guys, I totally did it. And I added the darn adhesive. Did anybody not see me do that? <laughs> so, oh, I'm so mad. Oh, I'm so mad. But guess what? I think I can fix it. So don't do that. Oh my goodness. Just pretend I didn't do that, please. Oh my gosh. I should have had a, like a big note here saying, do not use adhesive on that top corner. Okay, <laughs> sorry. I'm gonna double stack this. Have you guys ever double stacked? Um, so actually, let me take this mini off. Oh gosh, you guys, really? 
but we're gonna fix it. I'm gonna use a mini one. And you can double stack them if you want to get like twice the height. This is gonna go in here, okay? Let's embellish it with those, the um, iridescence, but we're gonna use the biggest one here, okay? Then this one is gonna have the biggest one. <laughs> okay, what'd you say? Don't worry, we know what you want to do. Thank you. Okay, I said I was gonna add Wink Stella to this one because I think it might um, look really good. And if you do small brush strokes, um, then it will be fine. So just make sure there's not a lot of um, Wink Stella in your barrel. So let me grab some a tissue because there's a lot in mine. Okay, so I'm gonna just make simple brush strokes. You could use the stamp and do like um, tone on tone, use the Flirty Flamingo ink with the Flirty Fling, you know, the stamp to make tone on tone, but I'm gonna use the Wink of Stella. We use Wink of Stella on the first card. Um, this is a new one, so it is totally coming out fast. Okay, then we will open this one up and let's brush stroke this. It will dry a little bit darker, but it's gonna have that nice glitter. Okay. So we're gonna add a few more of those little iridescent rhinestones, so, but I'm gonna use the smaller ones. So I'm just gonna sprinkle them in the white areas here. So one, two, and a little one up here, three. Okay, so now Okay, it sits like that. Can you see? Here, let me zoom out. There we go. So it fits like that. I don't know, it's hard to say. So open it, like you can open it this way and then this way. Now, if you wanted to add some designer series paper on this side to cover up that score line, um, let's see what will work in that paper. So, um, could it, oh, it's over here. You could, you know what, let's just use the same, let's see. I want that same pattern, so let's just grab it. And sorry, I hit the camera. We just need to cut it. Of course, we're gonna cut it this way because we want our daffodils going up. So we're going four inches. And by five and a quarter. Oh, I'm gonna cut, I like this over here. So I always look at my paper both ways. And I'm gonna cut some of that, those daffodils off. And now we can see, do we want this image here or do we want this one? And I certainly want this one. So we're going to add our stamp and seal to this paper here. Making sure our daffodils are going the correct way. Okay. Now, well, that's really pretty. When you open that up, look at that. That's beautiful, right? Have you guys ever done that? When you make your cards, have you ever put the four by five and a quarter on the left side? Um, I've never done that. And guess what? Next month's card club is gonna have that. You're gonna use your designer series paper even more. Okay, let me know. Have you ever done that? Okay, now what I would do with this card is 
I would I would probably redo it because um, it got torn over here um, but it's it's fine for me and this is gonna be a sample card that I'll use at my um, catalog launch at the end of this month so there is your easel card so we've got that let's just show like look at that like okay people right which one is a little bit more attractive um that's like obvious like why why haven't we been using our designer series paper this way like this is like a no-brainer to me right so boring here and like you got that right like we're doing this card club vanessa next month like very pretty right right so that's what we're gonna do so to recap um here's our pop-up card um and i made this other one too so i've actually got three of these here and then the card that we made earlier is not this one or is it no it's not that one it's that's one i made earlier and then here's this one they're the same with the white background and then here's the one we made tonight which is that so pretty right look at that it's so pretty using the paper and we have so much designer series paper like how much paper do you have that you can um, use from your stash and just make like this doesn't really take much um, cardstock at all you get the three by four and the two and three quarter by three and three quarter pieces times two a little strip of white and use whatever you can for the middle in white and stamp it and like that's not very much in supplies it's a little bulky so i don't know as if it would go regular postage it might I can weigh it for you guys if you want to know that because I have a little scale in my craft room. So let me just see. I bet it's gonna go a little bit, it's heavier. So it's, without the envelope, it says it's 0.6. With the envelope, it's 0.7. Now, if I put a liner of cardstock in there to protect those iridescent basic jewels, it says it's 0.8. So guess what you can send this regular class mail so that's fun right so use up that designer series paper and if you want to show me any of your cards that you've made recently and you want to mail them to me i'll definitely spotlight them on my next live which will be monday on youtube or uh, facebook so let me just see if you guys have any questions because um youtube does not allow me to go back and answer them um, so that's why I don't answer them, but I appreciate everybody watching me tonight. It's been a great fun time Getting the snow Sunday Louise is getting the snow on Sunday. We, uh, we're getting it Monday. So thank you for that <laughs> How much snow are you gonna get Louise? How much snow we'll get I hear from Jeff Tab. Um I do light then dark and back to light for the blends. Yep, that's another way you can do it. My favorite way to color is whenever I'm using at the moment. I like alcohol markers, color pencils with OMS and watercolor pencils with a blender pen. Or yeah, I forgot about the blender pen. I have one actually right on my desk. I don't use it much, but um, I've taught my um, my kid in my kids class last Saturday we actually used a blender pen I showed them how to do that is the profile of these gems higher than the regular rhinestones um let me I have basic rhinestones so hold on and I'll look I have them on my book, my grandmother's bookcase. It's a really cute antique bookcase. It's painted in white. 
it's got one, two, three, four shelves on it, and that's where I keep all of my stamps and my like um, all my cases for my embellishments. So if I was to take one of these basic jewels, oh, definitely these are higher for sure by like twice the size is my guess. But if you take this card, even though it's got all these layers and it weighs under an ounce, um, where's that? Here, I got some cardstock. I keep cardstock cut in my desk. So you could, here's a really, what is that? Very, I can't remember the name of that color, but that's really super bright. And then let me just take an envelope I have over here. And I just put it all in here like this. It covers up those jewels and the postman will be okay with this. I'm pretty sure I would send this regular plat postage. It doesn't weigh over an ounce. So you're good to go on that. So basic rhinestone jewels are definitely smaller um, or the height on it is, is smaller. All right, what's the next question? Do we have any? Um, Yeah, the, I agree, Teresa, the yellow brightens up the paper. You have the green and the sediment. Yep, daffodil, daffodil, brighter as always. Yep. Will vellum cover it with a strip of DSP across the score? Oh, vellum. No, I don't think so. You're going to still see that. Um, you're still going to see that score line. I think your best bet is to use designer series paper. Even though you're going to see, where is that one I used? You're going to see like a quarter of an inch of score line here and down here. Nobody's going to care, right? Um, it's still going to cover up that majority of that score, um, score line and that paper is pretty um, beautiful. Thanks for the otter card win. I love the rainbow striped one. Rainbow stripe. Oh, oh rainbow stripe. So this one, right, Jean Ann? This one, I'm assuming is the one so I'll pull that aside ribbon worked the, that ribbon worked great for stamping on I stamped oh some of the leaves on it it worked great stamped some of the leaves on it I'm gonna try that um where's that ribbon so she's saying she stamped on this ribbon um did you what color did you use the the um the classic ink pads because I'd like to know if you use the classic ink pads yes oh I'm so oh, I'm still gonna wait my laptop's 20 second delay <laughs> so if did you use this ink evening evergreen okay I got evening evergreen of course I do it's my favorite green right Okay, so I've got Evening Evergreen. I'm gonna use this fern, but I'm gonna clean it off first. We're experimenting. Okay, that's dry. <laughs> All right, I've never done this before. This is gonna be fun since I've never done it. Let's see, I'm gonna go here. Ooh. Two. Let's go some. Nice. Oh, look at that. Can you guys see that? Thank you for that tip. I use the little tiny leaves from Friendly Hello. Okay, well that one is on my other room there, but this one worked too, even though it's it's fern. It actually doesn't look like fern in a way, now that I stamped on it, but that looks really super cool. Thank you for that tip. All right, um, let's see, I like that card. Do non-card maker recipients know to display this without an explanation? Oh, the easel card, <laughs> Nino. I don't know the answer to that. I would hope that they would get it because this would be loose and they'd probably say, oh my gosh, that's loose. But then if you were to add the designer series paper, you would definitely have to burnish it again. 
I don't know if they would know that or not, to be honest with you. You could put a little sticky note in, inside, like put a little post-it note here and just say, this is, this is an easel card and it stands up. Pop it up and put it against that daisy. I'll probably put an explanation and note in there. Yes, Pam, you definitely like to decorate the blank side. I know you do. And I should have picked that up, picked up on that too, right? Um, so see you on Monday. Yes, I'll be here Monday. My area three to five, other parts in Kentucky up to eight. I, wow. We haven't had a snowstorm that has had more than five inches of snow all season long. And it's already the middle of January. All right, that's all I have. All right, I hope you guys liked the class today. Um, don't forget about, let's see, Card Club. It will be expiring on the 20th. Um, so if you would like to be part of my Card Club, it's $39 a month. So it's all kits and product with instructions and videos for all of the uh, make it easy and it's super organized and a lot of you watching are part of my card club so thank you so much on that um i'm gonna hunker down in my my um, craft room tomorrow and i'm going to be um getting the penguins class all um ready to go and ship on monday and it's too late to join that so um, the link is closed down, but if anybody ever, if you want, you forgot to join and you wanted to join, just send me an email and I can open that up real quick for you to join in. It's a super fun um, note card class. And I think that's it. So it is 8.32 and I didn't take two hours tonight. So um, anyway, I hope you guys have a great night and be well, wear your mask. And, um, I don't know, just don't get sick. All right, let's get rid of this virus as soon as we can. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.